Hey guys, Thomas from Team Sakurazo here. Come at you guys with a prediction list for quarter century bonanza. Now, this is a very huge list. So there's gonna be a lot of weird filler a lot of people haven't seen coming. But I feel like I can actually confidently tell you guys some of the cards are gonna be through past trends and some things they kind of miss. So we're gonna get right to it. But before I begin, if I get a hundred likes on this video, I will make a part two of this. Within about three weeks, possibly a month, just because I love giving you guys more content. And if you guys really like this, I want to make more content about it. And I feel like every time I do a prediction list and I upload it, like a day later, I figure out something I wanted to mention every single time. So when that happens, I can be like, oh, if I get 100 likes, I can mention it and I can pretend like it was all planned. Right? Even though I clearly forgot and didn't think of something. So... Do that. Subscribe if you've not already. We're so close to 5,050 subs. So go ahead and subscribe. Check out our sponsors description below like TCG Player, whatnot, and Tapio Cards. Uh, you can get discounts slash help the channel with no additional cost to you. Uh, and with whatnot, you actually get $15 if you use my link to sign up, which is for, for free. So it's awesome. So go do that. And we're going to get right to it. Thank you to my YouTube channel members. And we're going to start off with how I kind of failed a little bit with Rarity Collection 2. Now, obviously, there's going to be no perfect prediction list. In fact, my Rarity Collection 2 uh, prediction list was pretty good, actually, all things considered. But one of the things that they missed, which I thought they would hit with as a hand trap, would be Herald of Orange Light. You know, this card has seen play multiple times in older formats. We're seeing this uh, card in Edison now, and it's quite popular. We're seeing, we've seen in uh, Modern with not just Drytron, but Medulce and other decks like that. This card is quite popular as a hand trap, and when, since this is going to be the last time they do core centuries, it kind of makes me wonder... Why would they not put this card in? Especially because, and this is just a trend they have, is cards that have had OTS ultis have been in as quarter century. They've been like, okay, these have been ultis. We're going to make these quarter centuries. I don't really like that too much, but at least with Herald of the Orange Light, it was kind of a throw-in ulti and it was old. So I'm not like too upset with that. The second pick I have here is actually Triple Tactics Thrust because it wasn't in Rarity Collection 2, and this is something I thought was a shoe in Since in Rarity Collection 1, we actually got Talents as a QC, and I was like, oh, they're going to match it in the second one with Thrust. It would make perfect sense. It would be an amazing reprint, and people would really, really love it. And they ended up not doing that, which I found very, very odd, especially because Konami does not shy away from making OTS ultis as uh, cards in rarity collection. I mean, enemy control didn't even have three months. And our next card that I would have had here if I missed it was Diviner. But they ended up making it a ulti and OTS 25 and a QC within like the same two weeks, which is really, really dumb to me. So Konami is not afraid of doubling up on cards. They might give this to us in the tins and in rarity uh, collection bonanza, which would be like really weird as a double up thing. But they probably will. It's just my opinion. Now, Dark, the Dark Charmer Gloomy here, and we got Area. Now, I'm just saying all the Charmers. I'm just trying to pull up two to make it simple. A lot of people are going to be like, oh, they're trying to put this in Rarity so that, you know, we have all the Charmers. And I definitely see that coming. You know, they want to make all the Charmers accessible as a high Rarity. It would help sell the set. Um, if you have these, it would be a big rip. Uh, granted, you know, 350, 424. I mean, if they don't get reprinted, then I guess they're safe. But I definitely see the Charmers in there. I would put like a 90% bet. They have to fill up, I think, 197 more slots. Their Charmers are a big chunk, so that'll be six. They might even put the little ones in there as well, honestly, which would be horrible. Uh, but they honestly just might, just because. And that would really suck. But that's just one thing they might end up doing. Um, so just be worried or wary about that. Granted, out of those, the rest of the 197, not all of them are going to be cards that come as QC, so just something to keep in mind. Uh, we have Ghost Girl, Reaper, Ch uh, and Winter Cherries, which is a $7, $8 ulti, by the way, Lamau. And then we have Dogwood here, which is higher and does, doesn't even have an ulti. Man, imagine if they made this the ulti instead. $15, $19 here for your spooky Dogwoods. This card is definitely something that could be in Bonanza because they are already putting in stuff like Ogre, Ash, right? We're getting all the hand traps. Uh, these are two hand traps that are missing along with Herald of the Orange Light. So most likely the go these last two Ghost Girls are going to be there. Now I'm actually going to get to the innovative stuff because a lot of people are going to be like, wow, this is exactly what we thought if you've been keeping up. Now, Evil Twin Lila here uh, and Kiss a Kill. 
These two are going to most likely be in there. And you guys are probably going to be thinking, well, why Evil Twins? Well, not only are they a very popular aesthetic, and they definitely have their fan base, Konami has a trend of giving us alternate arts in our rarity collection. And Banan's, I think, is going to be the same thing. Where they would put in the Evil Twin alt arts, then rarity collection Bonanza. We're probably going to get them censored, unfortunately. Uh, 99.999%. .99 but they're probably going to be in their SQCs, and Konami's going to be like, hey, you know, the alternate arts look good. You guys wanted them because a lot of people wanted these alternate arts for a long time. They were actually predicting them in Rarity Collection 2. I knew it was too soon, so I didn't mention them, I think, but maybe I did. Then we have Alistar here. Now, I'm going to include Alistar, Mechaba, and Invocation, right? So all three of these, even though Mechaba and Invocation are not here because they have alternate arts. And Konami, I feel like uh, Invoked can get legacy support. Because the deck's that old, everybody. Uh, the cards are actually that old. So if invokers just start getting, you know, alt, uh, alternate arts to promote or have, have people have access to um, the cards for the new support, I wouldn't be shocked. It'd be more alternate arts. And a lot of people would really, really like that. Uh, now, I don't really like the Alistair alternate art. I think this one's the best, but that's just my opinion. But the Mechaba one's cool. So they can put this as our alternate arts. Uh, Runic here. So, Runic doesn't really have any QCs besides, obviously, you know, Slumpnir, which is actually kind of cheap for what it is. How much is this? I'm a Market Watch channel, so I get to use this as an excuse to look at more cards. 20 and then 25. You know, not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, Bonanza probably isn't going to rip this one because there's so many. But what QCs for Runic can we expect? I would like if they put the extra deck stuff more. That's just my opinion because I believe I'd rather have high rarity extra deck, especially because it's, you know, better double sleeve those and all that uh, than main deck. That's just my opinion, but a lot of players like to see it that way. I think that Tip and Fountain do have a shot, but I really think they'll look at the extra deck. Like, they'll look at Huggin. They'll look at Gary. Is Gary worth money now? Okay. Well, Gary's worth money now. Dollar. Okay um oh that's interesting look you guys get mini market watch right uh they could go for the spells here but i just really think they're gonna go for the extra deck, like munin i just that's what i think but i would not be shocked if we see some of the spells as qc's as well um so just something to be wary of uh now we got some hero cards stratos they love reprinting starlights that have ultis as well as qc's i hate it but it is what it is 168 here strauss is also strato so i won't be shocked DPE is another Starlight that they could reprint, unfortunately. Uh, it would suck, but oh well. Malicious here, uh, I think would actually be good because this card is so iconic. And I think it would be awesome to have a set that actually gave everybody like different types of Malicious to run. It'd be super cool. You know, 12 bucks for your secrets there. Bane can also be over here at 6 because it's an iconic hero card and it did make them a lot of money in the past with how its original print was like 100 120 same with the dust of gold and the dust of gold could be in here shadow mist could be in here uh as well but these are just the hero cards that could be placed in here again i don't want this video to be forever so i'm trying to make sure that you guys get all your information now the limbs kunami needs to fill up slots like i said right they made the head a promo which was i i never expected that after they made it a Starlight Rare in, like, less than a year, right? So, they they made it less than 10 months. So, they announced it within, like, 8. It was crazy. But, yeah. Your limbs are also going up here. And I think that a lot of people would actually... Even though it's a bad decision to put them in Bonanza, it does have a chance. I don't know if they could put them as just QCs or other cool rarities. I don't know. But, personally... I think that they have a good shot of being in here to fill up because the set's so big that they're going to want some filler that does something because these are QCs. People are going to be like, well, I want the, the set of Exodia, right? So it's not going to be a terrible decision, but I don't like it. It's not going to be good either. Mm, got my nice coffee here. Have you guys hit the like button yet? Dark Magicians here. Starlight. Now, this is another card that I can make. Uh, 9700. I think this is why this card's not a lot of money, because people are actually predicting this card to be in there as the DM love, and I would not be too shocked either. I got mine at like a solid, you know, 90. I think I paid 90 for mine. So, and I like it for collection purposes. Granted, if they make it a QC and I lose my money, it's going to suck, but 
it is what it is. I mean, I was probably never going to move it anyway, but especially with how cheap I got it, like if it went to like six, seven hundred, I could use that money for stocks. Maybe I'd let go and get a secret or a promo, but just my opinion, they'll probably print this because it's th this card's kind of like printing money. They made it a secret or a promo and made a lot of money. Yada. Now they love cr reprinting Crystal Revenge as QCs. I don't know why. They just love reprinting them as QCs. So I have Yada here. They don't reprint Yada. I would pick it up at 60. Blackwing uh, Dragon. Again, it's a signer card that they didn't put as QC. Um, 56 here. Again, it is possible because I felt like they reprinted this. Or that or they announced something with this. Uh, Yeah, they didn't make it some type of Starlight already, did they? I, I felt like they did for some reason. No, they didn't. But it has a chance. But 55 56 is not that bad. I also have Power Tool here because they might just put the Signer Dragons that they've missed in here. So they'll put Power Tool. They'll put Red Dragon Archfiend possibly, which is like fine because, you know, the Ghost is still a Ghost. But it's definitely possible. I know someone's going to be like, well, what about Livestream Dragon? Well, not only does nobody care about Livestream Dragon, but it's technically the same card. So a lot of people are probably going to not care too much. Uh, now we got the Edison card. So Magical Android. Now I'm going to tell you something about the Edison reprints. They are probably only going to reprint Edison cards that are legal. So they're not going to put Amaryllis in here. A banned card. They're just not. A royal oppression, which is unfortunate. But Magical Android here... Uh, absolutely needs a reprint i mean people are like oh i'm scared of buy picking up magical android well dude the out of the four printings granted you we could say three because throw pack sucks is rare dual terminal is rare these are not many listings here so magical android is one of them dark and dragon would be another fantastic one to have in here i would actually love it colossus would be a really cool one actually i'm actually glad they put this up here colossus uh, uh, you know for edison players would be really good it's really iconic uh, Goyo slash Brio would actually be really good here, as you guys could tell. Uh, maybe Gores. Actually, Gores could have a really good, uh, legacy reprint here. I think that would be awesome. A uh, Gores QC, which I have a comment or a dollar. Uh, this would be a very, very good card to put in there. Even Track, because Track doesn't have hollow printings much. Would be really, really cool. Uh, then we have Beatrice. Now, I think Beatrice deserves to be banned. I thought it should be banned before, because here's the thing about Beatrice, okay? Is Beatrice is a card that everybody, when it's meta, people want it banned, and then it doesn't become meta, and people are like, guys, well, it wasn't that bad. And then the same thing happens. Like, I'm telling you, this this exact scenario that I just told you guys about people being like, oh, it needs to be banned. And then the second it leaves the format, because, um you know, the deck's got power creeped or hit to oblivion, they'll, they're like, oh, well, Beatrice isn't that bad. Has happened, I don't know, five, six times, right? Just ban the damn card. Like, honestly, especially with the Fiendsmith engine having this, I don't like it. I don't want them to foolish burial shit. I'm good. I really want this card banned. But if it's not banned, I expect a QC. And then summon Sork and here. Now, this would be a dark. They would count this as a DM card just because it's, you know, looks DM coded, if you understand that. Uh, this card need is has an errata in the OCG. We have a while until then. So Konami might actually give us a ban list in August. Another quick ban list before Bonanza. It's possible it's like two and a half months. And then they would give us Summon Sork and they would give us the Arata here so that Arata is accessible. Because they've got an off flag for giving us Aratas and not making them accessible. Look at Firewall Dragon. Firewall Dragon had a ulti and a ghost. And those were the only Arata versions. They did not have the Eldorado rare until quite a while after. And Kurai might be like, well, we want to make our Aratas accessible so we're gonna rot a summon torque we're gonna unban it right before bonanza and we're gonna do the same thing we did with ancient fairy where there was like a note where it's not legal to like the day that they're playable right uh and they might put summon torque here uh as a reprint which would be something i guess i mean i'm just saying it'd be interesting but with that being said that's my prediction list i wonder what you guys think is going to be in this set in the comment section below i would love to hear it um if you again 100 likes on this video. I'll make sure there is a part two uh, for this. Because I do have a few more cards that I did want to mention. But I don't want to make this video too long. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.